Hello everyone! After looking over some of the projects already submitted, I wanted to address an issue that I'm seeing. It has to do with global state, a concept we haven't really talked about. However, some of you are falling into a trap with it. Not only could this cause confusing bugs for you to have to fix, but I'll be instructing the TAs to penalize those who make this mistake. Before we talk about the mistake, let's talk about state. State is the idea of memory. When you create a variable, you have created state. An integer variable might have the number 0, and then the number 100, or the number 200. These changing values are changing state. Here, I'll define a variable at the top level. Initialized it to 0, then I increment based on its previous value, and then I change its state completely to be 200. When I execute, you can see the execution over time changes the value associated with time till by the end of the program it's set to be 200. When the program ends, the variables disappear and the state is no longer available. Variables defined inside of a function only live as long as the function is executing and then their state disappears too. We've learned one other place to store state and that's inside of classes. So let's create a world class and a constructor. This is just like in the red dot quest and your other games. We have a player attribute and a game status attribute. And that necessitates a player class with its own constructor that will consume no arguments besides self and initialize its location to be home. Everyone starts at home every game they play. Any instance of our world class will have two attributes, the player and the game status. These represent the state of the world. When I make a world instance, I get those two attributes, and they can change for each separate instance. So let's say I'm the auto grader, and I'm going to create a winning version of your game and a losing version of your game. Remember, we give it the win path and the lose path, and it plays your game on your behalf. It needs to keep these two things distinctive, otherwise confusion would reign. So here we've got a winning world and a losing world. If I run my game uh, so far, it creates the world and player and generates instances of them. So let's skip all the way to the end. We can see the final layout. We have our world definition and our player definition, which are just a pair of methods each and one method each. And then more importantly, we have our winning world and our losing world. For our winning world, I set the game status to be one. You know, that matches up what I saw over here. And for my losing world, I set the game status to be lost. They both still have their player location as home, but they're separate. They're distinct from each other. They both have their own copy of the player instance stored inside of them. Having this state be separate is critical to the world keeping track of the game in a reasonable way. So I also have a separate player instance. If I change one player's location, it doesn't change the other one. Let's just verify that visually. I'll update winning world dot player dot location as work. And this time I scroll through and you see now my winning world's player's location is work, distinctive from home in the losing world. Now let's start getting to the nuance, the interesting problem that people have. Um, in the red dot quest, I had another class called Animal. And the players could befriend a number of animals. Mechanically, this meant adding animal instances to a list. So let's start off. We'll create an animal class. They have a name and an initial energy, which is always zero. Um, and at this point I was saying like, oh, I've got these animals um, and they are my friends and I've got to keep track of who is my friend over time. Well, I need to create a list, store some animals in it, but where do I put the list? And this is the critical mistake that a lot of students are making. At this point in time, students will make a top level variable and they'll put some animals in it. So perhaps pumpkin and Reese. So if you do this, and then you try and have methods that refer to friends, you're going to run into issues. Let's create a player uh, a method called befriend animal that consumes the name of an animal and appends a new animal to the list. 
and we'll also create another method called print friends that consumes nothing other than the self and prints out you are friends with on one line and then goes through each animal in the friends and prints them all out. You'll see that this code, assuming I didn't make any errors, actually runs. It's happily steps through. It creates the list of animals. So you can see that we've got over here our friends. Um, on the, We've got the references to them. Uh, list of length two, one named Pumpkin, one of named Reese. We can step through, and we can also create our winning world and our losing world. And we've got a winning world, a losing world, and our list of animals. What if we then try and go ahead and say, befriend an animal in one world. Like we'll befriend a new animal named Ada. And in the losing world, we're going to have them print out their friends. Now, in theory, what should happen, what we want to have happen, is our winning world and our losing world will be kept separate. Um, the player's friends in one world shouldn't interact with the other. But we'll see that's not the case. Because of the way that we've done our stuff, the same friends list is being shared between both worlds. So I went all the way over to the end. Now I'm stepping forward. I'm befriending an animal right now. And now I'm printing out the other animals. And you'll see that it prints out, in the losing world, three animals. Because it goes to the same list we have inside of here. Both both worlds are referencing the same top-level friends variable. It's sharing the state between them. It might pass all of your tests, depending on how you how well you're great you're writing your unit tests. Um, but if the TA see it, they're going to mark off points because it's a bug. It's a subtle bug, but it's still a mistake in terms of your program's correctness. When the auto grader starts trying to run out your game, they might encounter situations where it sort of uh, carries over the state from previous games. Um, you might think you could just carefully order the runs of your games to try and avoid this, but that's not the right strategy. You need to make sure that they're distinctly having different friends. So, um, how do we go about doing that is probably your next question. And the idea is to take this top level variable and put it as part of the state of your game. Um, in other words, it needs to either be in world or a class that lives inside of world. So player, for instance, lives inside of world. So we can definitely put it in there. It really depends on the design decisions of your games. In the case of my red dot quest, a player has friends, not the world has friends, so the player has friends. So we need to make sure that it's an attribute of the players. It's important that we make it an attribute and not just a variable. If it's just a variable, it ends at the end of the function. If it's an attribute of the class, then it will stick around. So at this point, I have a new attribute called friends. I will befriend, when I befriend animals, it updates self.friends instead of the top level variable. And when I print my friends, I print the instances friends, the attribute friends, not a top level variable. So this time, when I step all the way through, we'll go through a bit more slowly this time, we create all of our instances. Right now we're creating our winning world. We go through and create all of its animal buddies. And we create our losing world. Oh, I went too far. Let's slow down to here. So at this point in time, skipping through the code, we've created our winning world and our losing world. And you can see that their instances, they're starting to get a bit complex. They're starting to get a bit big, but that's no problem. Our winning world has the game status one. It has a player instance. That player instance has a location. I've set it to be work. It also has its friends list. And that friends list is distinct from the losing world's friend list. They have their own copies, their own separate copies. And if we befriend an animal in the winning world, this updates the animal instance in the winning world. It creates a new ADA, stores it in the list. And now you can see our winning world has three friends inside of it, while our losing world still only has two. And that gets confirmed when we print out our friends. You see that 
it only ends up printing out two animals for the losing world. It's very important that you don't let your games end up being in invalid states. Your game could crash, for instance. The analogy here is if you were playing a single player game and your friend who was playing the same game was able to mess with your world even though you're on different computers. Uh, it starts messing up your items, triggering cutscenes, you'd be pretty peeved. So make sure you're not creating uh, global variables that are part of your game's state. Um, keep everything as an attribute of the world or player or some other class that lives inside of world or player. The only global variables you should have in your code are the underscore author and underscore version at the top of your file, the win path and the lose path, and any variables you need to write your unit tests, which I assume will mostly be worlds depending on how you structure your tests. Um, and those should be distinctive from the uh, variables that you're relying on to actually build up your world. So that's what I wanted to say about state. Uh, best of luck with your games. Feel free to ask any follow-up questions on the Piazza. Otherwise, have good luck.